All right, 631, uh, I'm gonna call this meeting to order. Uh, clerk, could you please call the roll? Lakshan. Lakshan. Here. McGuire. Here. Michaels. Here. Pasalakwa. Here. Paul. Here. Rodriguez. Here. Store. Here. Straub. Here. Summers. Here. Taylor. Here. Thorsland. Here. Wolfen. Here. Ammons. Here. Carter. Here. Cowart. Esri. Here. Fortado. Here. Goss. Here. Harper. Here. Humphrey. Here. King. King. Here. Patterson. Here. Uh, have a motion for the approval of the agenda and addenda. I'm sorry, but before we continue, I don't see any Republicans on the feed. Apparently, they're all in person. Is there a camera that's available to show them? Let me check with IT. Give me just a second. Thank you. Why did... If we can't do that, when we get to the part where if you want to first or second or talk, you're just going to have to do it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. We can't um, see you. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't realize this would be the setup tonight. Um, it seems pretty impractical. Um, I wish it would have been discussed with me beforehand. I was kind of surprised to see that that would be the setup. Um, the in-person's worked, uh, but I don't think it really works when we have half and half. Is it, uh, are we sure it's not a violation of OMA? I'm not sure of that. Can you hear us talk? Yeah, the, uh, there has to be visual as well. We're working on getting that fixed. Thank you. Which rule states there has to be visual? Uh, if you look at the Attorney General's website on their updated guidance for OMA during the um, uh, uh, governor's emergency order. Um, one of the aspects of remote meetings is that uh, members need to be uh, uh, visual. I think uh, particularly during votes. I see multiple names, not faces on the screen of Democrats. And how can you use a phone only just call in? I'm not the attorney general. You can we should probably take it up with him. Well, have we been violating the rules from the beginning? Another thing you do is show up for the meeting. So are the Republicans just going to continue to yell out and be insulting, or are we going to have a meeting? We didn't start holding up the meeting. There they go. Oh, looks like we have visual. Um, all right, uh, we have a motion for the approval of the agenda. So moved, Harper. Second, Straub. Uh, any discussion or uh, adjustments? All right, seeing none, uh, could you please call the roll? Lakshin. Yes. McGuire. Yes. Michaels? Yes. Pesalakwa? Yes. Paul? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Store? Yes. Straub? Yes. Summers? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Thorsland? Yes. Wolken? Yes. 
Emmons? Yes. Carter? Yes. Coart? Esri? Yes. Portado? Yes. Scott? Yes. Harper? Yes. Humphrey? Yes. King? Yes. Patterson? Yes. All right, we have some minutes that we have to approve. Um, without objection, I'd like to approve those in omnibus. Uh, could I have a motion? So moved, Thor's land. Second, King. All right, is there any discussion or any uh, alterations? Miss um, King? On the minutes for the, I think it's the second special meeting, I'm marked as being, as not attending. It's the uh, finance study session of May 25th, 2021. I'm marked as not attending. I think I signed in around 6.32. So I am quoted in the minutes themselves. I can get that updated. Thank you, Megan. All right, I see no, no other discussion. Uh, Clerk, could you please call the roll on the um, uh, minutes with the adjustment? Lakshin? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Michaels? Yes. Pasalakwa? Yes. Paul? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Store? Yes. Straub? Yes. Summers? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Thorsland? Yes. Wolken? Yes. Ammons? Yes. Carter? Yes. Esri? Yes. Portado? Yes. Goss? Yes. Harper? Yes. Humphrey? Yes. King? Yes. Patterson? Yes. All right, moving on, we have public participation. Uh, if any members of the public would like to uh, address the board, uh, please raise your hand at this time. All right, seeing no members of the public stepping forward for comment, uh, moving on to the next agenda item, communications. Uh, Ms. Furtado, Dr. Um, Ms. is fine. I just wanted to mention that in under the section on communications, we have three um, American Rescue Act funding requests from various elected officials, um, from Judge Rosenbaum and the courthouse officials, uh, from Susan McGrath, the circuit clerk, and for Dustin Herman, the Chairman, the uh, sheriff, um, would that sort of give more outlines or maybe some new ideas um, on things they would like us to consider? Um, and I just also wanted to encourage the board members, if you haven't recently, uh, please revisit the chart that um, Executive Cobble put together on the various um, asks. And then I just wanted to mention that on, um, the in in partnership with the um, courthouse officials, they have invited board members to come on tours of the courthouse. Um, and uh, state's attorney Julia Reed sent me some dates starting on Tuesday through next Thursday. Um, they're all about ninety minutes. Um, I will send those dates to Megan. They're all in the afternoon or early evening, so there's a variety of times. Uh, but they would like to invite small groups of board members to come and tour the courthouse so that you could get a better sense of, of what they're doing. And I really do hope that board members take advantage of that as we go into the budget process. Uh, so they wanna walk us through some of the requests that they've put together and that might just be the best way to do it. So uh, Megan, I'll send that to you and ask um, that you get that out to the board, those, those dates. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention, some upcoming dates to circle on your calendar. So this um, June 29th, we are having our study session and that is gonna be on broadband. 
And I wanted to mention that we've got a pretty packed agenda with lots of great folks. Um, I wanted to thank uh, Jim Goss for helping me uh, reach out to some folks and get that put together. Uh, but we're gonna hear from the Housing Authority, the Farm Bureau, local service providers, um, some folks that have been working on, work on getting internet in our county for a long time. So if you can uh, make that meeting, that is gonna be in person. Um, then I wanted to mention if July 19th, um, if you could put that evening on your calendar is going to be an opportunity uh, for us to hear from our immigrant um, community and population um, and another opportunity for public feedback. And um, a big thanks to Dr. Nils Jacobson, and, who's helping me put that together. Then the next one, um, August 3rd, probably. Um, sometime either before or after the facilities meeting, some, this is tentative, we're going to do a session to talk about community violence. And then September 9th, as before or after the Environment Land Use Committee meeting, um, we're, I'm inviting the whole board to come and we are going to uh, hopefully be doing a session on water infrastructure. Uh, so those are just to have them circled on your dates more information forthcoming on the exact times um, and agendas on those. But I just wanted to get those out there as we go into the budget process. So um, I also just wanted to let the community know that that's sort of the tentative schedule of, of, of topics that we want to cover. Um, if there's anything you think I'm missing, if there's any public sessions you think we should be doing, uh, by all means, any of the board members could reach out to me and we could see if we can try to get that on the calendar as well. Mr. Thorson. Thank you, Chair Kyle. Uh, hopefully this is the last time we have to talk about this, despite the Delta variant of the coronavirus starting to lurk in to the community. Uh, we're at a, a wonderful crossroad in the pandemic. We're going to return in-person meetings. The ELOC meeting was in-person. Uh, restaurants are open again. Uh, people are dropping masks who have their vaccines. We got here not because of the 50 emails I got wanting us to open up early. We got here not because of speakeasy parties that turned into quarantine festivals. We got here not because of the people with the mask under their chin or under their nose or no mask at all all last winter in the Walmart and in the supermarket. We got here despite the fact that people are still arguing about whether COVID is real or not, whether the vaccine is safe or not, because their Facebook research has not proven that. We got here because many people, especially in this county and our wonderful public health department, have gotten shots in people's arms, which is unfortunate that today a cashier was shot over a mask argument and killed. Wrong kind of shot, folks. We got here because enough people did the right thing for a long enough time. And I wanna thank all of those people who did it. And I encourage all of those who have not yet gotten a shot or who are still skeptical about things. The Illinois Farm Bureau today uh, came out in favor of making sure people in the rural communities get vaccines. Go out, get your shot, do the right thing, and we can stay where we are now. Thank you. All right, is there anybody else uh, that would like to address the board? All right, um, seeing none, um, I'm gonna move on to uh, item seven, policy personnel and appointments. Uh, Chair Storr. Thank you, Chair Patterson. Uh, the HR report shows that there is nine vacant positions uh, several of them uh, either in corrections or with the sheriff's office. Uh, the, uh, and there's, oh, says three claims for workers' compensation, uh, which is the same as last year. Moving on to item number two, appointments 
and reappointments, I entertain a motion to, uh, an omnibus motion to approve the appointments uh, 2A through F, or excuse me, through uh, H, A through H and number J. Uh, I'm asking to delay appointment of number uh, 2I resolution appointing Bill Goodman to the county, Champaign County Forest Preserve District because I haven't been able to get in touch with them uh, by, or at least by telephone. Uh, and uh, that's, that's the sole reason for um, want, wanting to delay that, uh, that appointment. Could, could I hear a, a motion uh, to, uh, could I hear, a, I'd, I'd entertain a motion. So moved, uh, Michaels. For 2A through Thank Second, you. Thor's land. Thank you. Uh, discussion on the motion. Hearing no discussion and seeing no hands, could the clerk please call the roll? Lockshin? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Michaels? Yes. Asalakwa? Hall? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Store? Yes. Straub? Yes. Summers? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Thorsland? Yes. Wolken? Yes. Hammonds? Yes. Carter? Yes. Yes. Howard? Yes. Esri? Yes. Portado? Yes. Goss? Yes. Harper? Yes. Humphrey? Yes. King? Yes. Patterson? Yes. Thank you to all those who applied and are willing to serve on these boards and commissions. And uh, we'll take up the resolution appointing Mr. Bill Goodman to the Champaign County Fourth Reserve District uh, next month. Uh, moving on to uh, item K, current vacant appointments. Uh, there's, there's not a whole bunch of those. Uh, again, they're for Cemetery Association one for the Champagne or for the Zoning Board of Appeals and one for uh, Public Aid, Aid Appeals uh, Republican. I hope that uh, you know folks can kind of help recruit a, a good person to or persons to serve on those uh, boards and commissions. Uh, item number uh, three, recommendation to the Finance Committee for approval of the creation of the senior zoning technician position to be assigned to grade range G, as in uh, golf, and the concurrent elimination of one of the zoning technician positions effective June 25, 2021. Do I hear a motion? Lord's land. Second, Pasalakwa. Okay, thank you both. Uh, discussion on the motion. Seeing no hands and hearing no uh, voices, I'd like to ask the clerk to please call the roll. Lakshin? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Michaels? Asalakwa? Yes. Hall? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Store? Yes. Straub? Yes. Summer? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Thorsland? Yes. Wolken? Yes. Ammons? Yes. Carter? Yes. Coward? Yes. Esri? Yes. Portado? Yes. Goss? Yes. 
Harper? Yes. Humphrey? Yes. King? Yes. Patterson? Yes. That, both, that passes unanimously. Uh, item number four, recommendation to the Finance Committee for approval of the creation of assistant animal control director position to be assigned to grade range I, effective June 25, 2021. Do I hear a motion? So moved, Rodriguez. I'll second, Lakshan. Rodriguez and Lakshan, thank you. Do I hear discussion on the motion? Sure. Hearing I no, oh, wait a minute, so Ms. Rodriguez. Yes, yes, it's okay. I, I know that um, my fellow uh, um, task force members would probably attest to the same, uh, Ms. Michaels and Ms. Taylor. Um, we've done the legwork on this. This is a necessary position. It really needs to be filled. Um, this is something that we need to do to serve our county well. Uh, that's all that I would like to add. Thank you, Ms. Rodriguez. Uh, is there any other uh, discussion to the motion? Seeing no hands and hearing no voices, I ask the clerk to please call the roll. Austin? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Michaels? Yes. Esselacqua? Yes. Hall? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Storr? Yes. Straub? Yes. Summers? Summers? Steve? Taylor? Yes. Thorsland? Yes. Wolken? Yes. Ammons? Yes. Carter? Yes. Cowart? Yes. Esri? Yes. Fortado? Yes. Goss? Yes. Harper? Yes. Humphrey? Yes. King? Yes. Patterson? Yes. And Summers again? Yes. Oh, good. All right. Thank you. That, that motion passes unanimously. Uh, County clerk's report is in the uh, uh, due to at, at, in the packet there. There is a uh, item number C, county uh, appointing a broadband task force. This is this would be for discussion only. Uh, should the should the county board appoint a task force, should that task force include county board members or members from the public or both? This would primarily serve rural residents but at some areas of, of, of municipalities. Mr. Thorsland. Um, I think it should be a mix as suggested. Uh, I think some of the county board members are uh, savvy in rural needs. Uh, others of us, maybe uh, a person from ELOC should be on it. This is where some of that may come through, uh, finance as well. Uh, and some of our rural representatives I think would be very interested in being on that. Mr. Storr, uh, Mr. Storr, Mr. yes. Stan, Har Stan Harper, please. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, I haven't studied this matter a whole lot. I know it's uh, much needed in the rural areas. Uh, I do know from a Farm Bureau aspect that the 
county plus the whole Illinois Farm Bureau has been studying this uh, matter for a number of years. Uh, I, I think that'd be a good source for us to use. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to add a couple county board members and anybody, another uh, organization out here that's very interested in the broadband for the whole county, uh, I think that's uh, could be well put to use, but uh, I would sure use the Farm Bureau as a starting point because they have uh, compiled a lot of data on this over the years. Thank you. Much uh, Could you, Stan, if you're aware of that, could, could you ask them to uh, make the county board members aware of their study so that we have that at our disposal, please? Uh, yeah, I'm sure, uh, Brad, you can, who manages the local county farm bureau, would be more than glad to uh, uh, give us some information. I'll do some yeah, checking. sorry to interrupt, but I will be meeting with Brad probably next week. Uh, uh, he reached out, and I agree with Stan completely. The Farm Bureau has been working on this a lot for a long time. Uh, Brad reached out to myself, and I believe Stephanie as well. Uh, and I don't know if we'll do it virtually, if we'll do it in person. I'm good with either, but uh, definitely want their input. Uh, I think that's a good idea, Eric. Yes, thank you. Very good. Uh, Dr. Furtado. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna meet with Brad next week. I think we're going to Kobe. And then um, he is gonna be on the 29th is gonna be the first presenter. Um, so when we have our broadband study session, uh, Brad is gonna be our first presenter right off the gate. I think um, I'd love, so I think that the work that the Farm Bureau has done has been awesome. I still think we as a county need to do a specific county study. I don't think it'll be a ton of work and I don't think it'll cost a ton of money in part because we could use some of the data that the um, 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 Farm, Bureau. Farm Bureau put together. But I think that um, you know, in, in every webinar that I've been on with broadband, their recommendation is the first step is to do a study. Um, so I've, I've gotten a few RFQs from other places, I think from Waukegan, from a county in Kentucky, and sent them over to uh, the executive. Um, one of the things we'd like to do, and we'd like to do it kind of quickly, is to come back um, to the board, maybe even at the end of the June board meeting, and ask for permission to put the RFQ out on the street to do the study. Uh, we don't have to um, appropriate the money for it until we know what that amount is. But if we want to put an RFQ out on the street um, from the ARPA money, and then I, I don't see that this board, that this subcommittee would have to meet forever. Um, I think just to help us facilitate, get through that study, which I definitely think would be something where we could build on the Farm Bureau data. And my understanding is the Housing Authority has also done some work on this issue. So uh, we could, and they're gonna come to our board meeting as well. I just got confirmation for that today. Um, so I think that um, if we could get in a room, I think that'll put us in a good position um, to get additional grant money, uh, both state and federal that is out there. We're a little bit already behind the curve on this that, um, that there's money out there and we're missing deadlines. Um, so I think if we, I, I, I think like maybe, I think we could use the animal control thing as a model, um, like maybe three board members and a few other folks um, and definitely somebody from the Farm Bureau, um, maybe somebody from the, the longstanding UC2B board project because they've been working on internet in our county for a long time. I'm open to any suggestions, but I, I think that if, if we could get that together and ha have them help us facilitate through the study, um, I think that would be great. Um, and I, I would really encourage, if, if you go online and look at Waukee, the city of Waukegan, they have like a whole website about their connectivity plan. You could read their RFP, it's pretty cool. I'll send it out to the whole board. The link, but um, but yeah, I'd love to get this in place. More mostly, so I, I just to be honest, it's not my wheelhouse. I want everybody in the county to have broadband, but um, it's just not my wheelhouse. And so, I think there's probably board members that are much more down with the lingo than I am. Okay, I'm gonna look. So, 
for a little guidance on this. What would be the next step that we would take this up at as an item at the county regular county board meeting later this month? Would that be the next step? Uh, Kyle or or Darlene? Darlene? Dr. Court County Executive Kleppel? Yeah, I could answer that. So, um, sorry, I'm trying to turn my picture on. Okay, there. So the county, um, the, the official way the county would have to do it is to set up a task force, which can be appointed at the next meeting if you'd like to do that. It can also run through the committee of appointments if you wanna do it that way, but that'll take another month. And also there's no committees in July, so we'd be into August. So I would recommend that if you're gonna do it, you do it in the, the June meeting and decide who you wanna be on the committee. And then Kyle, um, as the board chair, would appoint it as a subcommittee or a task force of the board. Technically, I'm gonna say this, I've already mentioned it once. I think you also should have done that with your animal control task force. If the board is getting appointed to committees, they need to do it in an official way because those are open meetings. They do need to be held openly to part, regardless of how many members there are. Um, if it's an official thing the board is doing that's regarding county business, it needs to be set up as a task force or a temporary committee to do that. And Kyle can do those appointments because he's the board chair and it's an internal committee to the board. So they would still require board approval probably, but he can he can do it. It doesn't have to go through my process. Very and good. Then I would then I would suggest I could I could also bring to the next meeting. Uh, Stephanie's mentioned the RFQ from Waukegan or some other places. I can bring a draft RFQ uh, proposal for you guys to vote on, and I can go ahead then if you vote on that and approve it. I can issue an RFQ right after the board meeting. And then we will get back potential pricing to see what we might need to allocate. Thank you. That, that, that's very helpful. Uh, is there any, uh, any further discussion on this? Just one comment, sir. This is Diane Michaels. Yes. Um, something we might consider and not necessarily that we have to do is maybe one of the smaller school districts uh, within the county because they actually found most of the struggles, I believe, with their students um, getting broadband. You know, that's that's kind of what we're trying to, what we're hoping to, to, to work with, not just the school, but the students that, that attend and, and the people that depend on data for precision farming. Dr. Furtado again. I think that's a great idea. I think that I think having somebody that specifically could talk to school connect, connectivity is a super great idea. How about could we maybe just do this? Let's maybe say by what is today? By Friday, if folks have specific names, maybe shoot them to Kyle and maybe each caucus could submit a name or two from the board to send to Kyle and then we could maybe get a list, list shaped up and and bring it to the board on in June. Um, I just I do agree I with with uh, Darlene that like we need to move on this. Um, I, I think it's somewhat urgent, just because I mean we got the ARPA money, but there's other money that's out there. There's a federal deadline that's in August, which we might not be able to make even as it stands. And the state is my understanding. The state's about to announce their next round of money, and so I I just want to make sure that we're in the best position as possible. Uh, to get it, frankly. Um, so if, if uh, does that seem like a good plan to, to folks? Okay, as I understand it, uh, Chair Patterson uh, that, or, or County Executive Kleppel will add an item to the June County Board meeting and uh, to uh, develop a uh, broadband task force and uh, Chairman Kyle Patterson will uh, make appointments. And uh, oh, Kyle, you you want to you have your hand up? I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, I, I do want to make a point, but I'll let you finish. Good. Th this would be a good time. Okay, I guess you're running through the whole thing. Um, are we? I mean, are we wanting to have? Like, what do we want the makeup of this to be? I mean, I think that like maybe uh, two members of each caucus and then 
I mean, there was mention of community members, um, the Farm Bureau, um, the Rural School District. I mean, those, those are all great suggestions, but are we planning on having the individuals by, by next county board meeting like selected for that? Or, or are we passing something that says it will include somebody from XYZ? Go ahead, go ahead and name the individuals. Sorry, it's Jim Goss. Okay, I mean, uh, I, it's gonna be kind of a quick turnaround, but I guess, you know, we can Do it. make it work. Hey, I Jim, that's, Jacob, I, you're, I you're, 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 this is a, that's a pretty short timeline for something that hasn't been announced. And, and I think that, that there, we could make this somewhat open-ended. We don't need to kind of have a, you know, a limited number. What, what do you think? That would be a slipshod process. I just want to put it out there. I, I, I didn't quite hear you. I'll let the other members who have had their hand up uh, speak oh. for me. Uh, Stephanie? I mean, I think that we need to yeah define how many people. I think either seven or nine, like you know, because enough county board members and a few folks from the public. I think why don't we try to get as many names as we can for the meeting, and then if we have a slot or two that's open, um, we could then lay, appoint them later. But I mean, the thing is, we don't want to have like a twenty-two. You know what I mean? Like if we want them to be able to to do like to meet and to to. We don't want a ton of people. I, I, I just, I think that this will just be a bunch of work and then it just won't be. Like, it, this isn't gonna be something that lasts forever. Like we set it up. I mean, I think it'll be done by October, right? Hopefully, unless they wanna continue to work, you know, to help us work on implementation, but maybe they could, you know, think about that at their first meeting or whatever, but. I'm sure as the as the uh, end of their term approaches, they'll have a they'll make a decision whether they need to have further meetings, and and that and and the board could continue it. Um, okay. Uh, Just briefly, sorry, because I did want to kind of jump to the back of the line rather than the front because I interjected. Um, it seems like something that should be run through the caucus leadership, right? Just if we're using the animal control task force as an exemplar that we're uh, choosing to follow. It seems like if we're designating a few members from the caucus to join this this task force, um, that would be more thorough process rather than like, hey, dance for us. Uh, <laughs> figure out who you want to appoint right now. Uh, that seems to be a more inclusive process to me. Mr. Storr. Yes, uh, go ahead, Jim. I did see your hand or, or <laughs> Sorry. But please. Um, my point was not to name them tonight. My point was to get it to as many of those names so that they can get started for the county oh. board meeting. I don't, we don't need to do it tonight. We need a week though to get those names, get them on the docket, get them started working so that we can go try to grab some of this other money, get started so we can get moving. I see a lot of nodding heads. Uh, County Executive Kleppel, do you think you have enough direction to kind of uh, proceed with what's needed for the for the July County Board meeting? Oh, Kyle. yeah, I think so. Oh, uh, Kyle. So and so who's uh, there's mention of me? Is it going to be me selecting Darlene? I mean, I really don't. It doesn't matter to me. But what is the process that we're going to do? I think I'm doing the RFQ proposal. Okay, and, I, and then I mean I can I can handle the um, um, uh, coming up with the list. Um, I I would just ask both of the caucus chairs to send me um, two members of their caucus to serve, and then also um, if people have recommendations or sort of referrals of who to be appointed, particularly if you have a relationship with them and you could get an agreement from them, uh, please send that to me. Um, I think we had a lot of good hypothetical suggestions tonight, so I think that we could probably get a good group together. 
Hot diggity dog. I think that we have uh, what's Dr. Storm. Like a, a, a consensus of a, a consensus. Good for us. Uh, the chair, there is no other business that I know of. Uh, the chair doesn't have a report. And the items to be designated on the consent agenda are items 2A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and J. Also item three and four, and then the uh, new item for the broadband task force. That concludes the uh, matters pertaining to policy, personnel, and appointments. Uh, Chairman Patterson. Thank Mr. You. Storr, sorry to jump in. Uh, items three and four are just moving forward to the Finance Committee, and the task force won't be on the uh, consent agenda. It'll be on the regular agenda since it's just a discussion item. Darn. Darn, I was going for a perfect score. Sorry. Sounded so good, too. All right. All right, uh, next on the agenda is item eight, uh, Justice and Social Services. Uh, Chair Taylor. Thank you. Um, very light this month. Uh, we have the monthly reports for Animal Control, April of 2021, and the Emergency Man Management Agency for April and May of 2021. Um, those are both on the county website in the normal places. Uh, the Rosecrans Reentry Financial Report is uh, information only for April 2021. Um, there is no other business. I do not currently have a chair's report. And um, I do not have any items to be placed on the consent agenda. Back to you, Mr. Patterson. All right, next is item uh, nine, finance, uh, Chair Furtado. Unless I hear a uh, protest from anybody, I'm gonna do one through seven as an omnibus motion. All right, so budget amendment 21-00020 fund 075 regional planning commission department 899 US Department of Treasury. Uh, rental assistance increased appropriations three million one hundred thirty eight thousand seven hundred seventy two dollars increased revenue three million one hundred forty thousand one hundred eighty two dollars budget amendment twenty one zero 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 two one fund zero seven five regional planning commission department six nine one home energy assistant households odd year increased appropriation three million sixty one thousand three hundred sixty eight dollars Increased revenue $3,150,168. Budget Amendment 21 00023, Fund 075, Regional Planning Commission, Department 903, Urbana Senior Repair. Uh, increased appropriations 40000 increased revenue 40000 Budget Amendment 21 00025, Fund 104, Early Childhood Fund, Department 901. ARPA supplement Head Start increased appropriations 796,869, increased revenue 796,869. Budget Amendment 21-00026, Fund 104, Early Childhood Fund, Department 900, COVID-19 Support Head Start, increased appropriations 200,445, increased revenue 200,445. Budget Amendment 21-00030, Fund 075, Regional Planning Commission, Department 904, LIHEAP, ARPA. Uh, increased appropriations, 4,693,534. Increased revenue, $4,693,534. Budget Amendment 21-00031. Fund 075, Regional Planning Commission, Department 905, LIHEAP, State Support, DCEO, increased appropriations for 95,700, increased revenue 495,700. Uh, do I have a motion? Mr. Patterson, do I have a second? Second, Straub. Straub. Uh, questions, I think, Kyle, did you have your hand up for a question or? Sorry, okay, Kyle and then Samantha. Uh, just a quick question for uh, C. Delitzos here. Um, so for these funds that are we're getting uh, for the ARP, um, are these going to be reoccurring, uh, or, or is this just you know one payment to cover the um, duration of that program? 
So in terms of the uh, ARPA funding, those will sunset, um, I believe, in 2023. So they will not be recurring. Uh, most of these that we're presenting to you tonight are either one-time funding or um, there is there are some that are supplemental uh, payments that we'll be making on behalf of our clients, but the ARPA funding will not be recurring, no. Okay, thank you. Samantha. I hope took my answer uh, or my question, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, so I, I had one really quick question on the, I think it's on the fifth one. Yeah, the fifth one mentions uh, some new like heating and systems and stuff for the Rantoul and Savoy Head Start site, and it, which is great. But you had also given us a memo indicating that you had some concerns about the longevity of the Savoy site. So I guess just how are those two things being balanced, like putting this money into that sort of capital improvement of a site that we're not so sure we've got forever. Sure, thank you, Chair. Uh, well, I think the, unfortunately, we have to continue to utilize the space until we find other alternative space. And so these are some of the immediate, uh, I would say, health and safety uh, needs that we have to address right now. And so uh, for Savoy, particularly based on the lease that we have with the village of Savoy, we are responsible for any repairs up to $10,000 and then anything above that, uh, the village um, is supposed to pick up. So right now we're in need of addressing some of these issues that are referenced in this budget amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? If any, any of my Republican friends have questions, please just shout out. Shout out, right. doctor. Oh, sorry, go for it. Thank you. Back to the question about Savoy Head Start. Um, will it remain? It'll remain in Savoy if it moves, right? You're just trying to find a new like location. Yeah, right now we're we're certainly been in the process of doing some strategic uh, planning and visioning for the Head Start program, given some of our current uh, realities in the community. And so, uh, part of that will be the need for us to get additional uh, space uh, to provide more center-based programming for for our children. I will let you know that uh, we are looking at places like Muhammad. Uh, we've been in conversations with Patrick Brown uh, to look into possibly establishing another site uh, in that community. So, um, you know, most of our families, I think, um, are in, um, you know, Champaign, Urbana. We've got, of course, a site in, in Rantoul. Uh, and we've established that there is quite quite a bit of need in Muhammad as well. So we haven't made any decisions yet in terms of Savoy, but uh, as we indicated in our proposal to the county board, if we were able to uh, find a different location for those classrooms, uh, that would be the most ideal thing for our families. Thank you. Thank you. And no other questions, if the clerk would please call the roll. Luxon? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Michaels? Yes. Hasselakwa? Yes. Hall? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Store? Yes. Straub? Yes. Summers? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Thorsland? Yes. Wolken? Yes. Ammons? Yes. Carter? Yes. Cowart? Cowart? Esri? Yes. Fortado? Yes. Goss? Yes. Harper? Yes. yes. Humphrey? Yes. King? Yes. Patterson? Yes.
All right, uh, next up, Budget Amendment 21-00024, Fund 089, County Public Health Fund, Department 049, Board of Health, increased appropriations 350,000, increased revenue 350,000, reason COVID-19 contract tracing grant amendment, increasing funds in the amount of 350,000 to be spent by the end of this year, an equal increase in appropriation is requested to extend payment uh, as services are provided. Do I have a motion? So moved, Thor's land. Second, okay, Mary second, Eric first. Uh, discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk could please call the roll. Lakshin? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Michaels? Yes. Pesalacqua? Yes. Paul? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Store? Yes. Straub? Yes. Summers? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Thorsland? Yes. Wolken? Yes. Hammonds? Yes. Carter? Yes. Coart? Yes. Esri? Yes. Cortado? Yes. Goss? Yes. Harper? Humphrey? Yes. King? Yes. Patterson? Yes. Uh, next, Budget Amendment 21-00027, Fund 613, Courts Automation Fund, Department 030. Circuit Clerk increased appropriations $75,975, increased revenue $35,975. Reason, 87,500 purchase required to replace failing court audio system. Circuit Clerk will pay 11,525 from fiscal year 2021 appropriations. Please, uh, please increase appropriations by 75,975,000 ,000 as follows, 40,000 from the fund balance, AOIC will reimburse the county for 35,975, uh, which is why we're appropriating that much, or that's why that's that much revenue, I mean. And then um, the balance, so those all equal out to 87,500. Do I have a motion? So move, Michaels. Michaels, do I have a second? Taylor. Uh, do I have any discussion? Michaels, Taylor, discussion? See none, if the clerk would please call the roll. Lakshin? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Michaels? Yes. Pesalacqua? Yes. Paul? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Store? Yes. Straub? Yes. Summers? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Thorsland? Yes. Wolken? Yes. Ammons? Yes. Carter? Yes. Coart? Yes. Esri? Yes. Portado? Yes. Goss? Yes. Harper? Yes. Humphrey? Yes. King? Yes. Patterson? Yes. Um, next up, Budget Amendment 21-00028, Fund 080, General Corporate Department 020, um, Auditor, increased appropriations, 22,000, increased revenue, $0. Reason, uh, we have a 37% increase in voucher volume from March to May 2020. Uh, to the same period this year, much stemming from rental assistance and other COVID relief money, this increase in volume is likely to be sustained at least through the end of 2021. Um, do I have a motion? So moved, Lakshin. Lakshin, uh, Jenny, okay. so moved and second. Jenny, Jennifer, so let's make it the double, the double Jennifer. Um, great, I also wanted to mention, it's not mentioned here on, on the reason statement, but I know that the auditor's office is also, um, a lot of the staff is consumed in ERP training. Some, some weeks it's uh, as much as three days a week for some of those staff, the full days. So um, I wanted to also mention that the auditor is here if anybody has questions, uh, questions. 
feel free to just talk if if I don't see your hand. All right, I don't see anybody. If the clerk could please call the roll. Lakshan? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Michael? Yes. Pesalakwa? Yes. Paul? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Store? Yes. Straub? Yes. Summers? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Thorsland? Yes. Wolfen? Yes. Ammons? Carter? Yes. Cowart? Esri? Yes. Portado? Yes. Yes. Goss? Yes. Yes. Harper? No. Humphrey? Yes. King? Yes. Patterson? Yes. Um, I just want to make sure you caught that Ammons uh, and did did say yes there. Um, budget Amendment 21-00036, Fund 840, American Rescue Act, Department 016, Administrative Services, Increased Appropriation 0, Increased Revenue 20,364,000. 815 reason uh, receipt 50% American Rescue Plan Act ARPA fund uh, local uh, coronavirus fiscal recovery funds total Champaign County allocation is uh, 40,729,630 do I have a motion Mr. Summers move approval second or is land I want to mention that um, thank you I want to mention real quick that this is just receiving the revenue uh, we will be taking individual votes on appropriating money for expenditure, but this is uh, just receiving the revenue. Um, I guess I'll take the first question. Um, I, maybe this is to, to Executive Koppel. Have we received the revenue yet? I know we had it as of yesterday. We have not received it actually in our bank account yet. Okay. Um, any questions on this? All right, seeing none, if the clerk could please call the roll. Lakshan? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Michaels? Yes. Pesalacqua? Paul? Yes. yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Store? Definitely yes. Straub? Yes. Summers? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Thorsland? Yes. Wolken? Yes. Ammons? Yes. Yes. Carter? Yes. Cowart? Esri? Yes. Portado? Yes. Yes. Goss? Yes, but I'd like it held off a of consent until we receive the money. I'll agree with that, yeah. Harper? Yes. Humphrey? Yes. King? Yes. Patterson? Yes. All right, that's great. And we'll, we'll, we'll keep that up at consent. I agree with Mr. Goss on that. Um, if I don't see any um, objections, I'm gonna move 12 and 13 together because they're like two sides of the same coin. Uh, Seeing on budget 20 amendment 21-00033 fund 840 American Rescue Plan Act Department 016 administrative services increased appropriations 50,000 increased revenue zero um, reason to contract with the Champaign County Regional Planning Commission for project and fiscal management relating to the American Rescue Plan Act grant funding in fiscal year 2021. Budget Amendment 21-00034, Fund 075, Regional Planning Commission, Department 902, ARPA Project Management, Increased Appropriations 50,000, Increased Revenue 50,000, Reason C Attached. Uh, does, do I have a motion? 
So moved. Blockchain. Blockchain. Second, Second Walken. Second, um, I'll, I'll go to Jody. Second, Jody. Um, sorry, I'm going to break up the Jennifer monopoly we got going on over here. Um, I, I did want to mention just a couple of things really fast because just questions that might come up in the public or that I can anticipate. This is to oversee the administration of the of the ARPA funding, make sure we stay in federal compliance. You'll see that overall, this is just for one year, half of the year, not even quite a half of the year, that it's about 1.5 of the money, which is decent, right? I mean, actually pretty low for administrative costs. Um, I will say that um, if anybody wants to know, does this mean, I love regional planning, I love Delipso, does this mean that regional planning is gonna be deciding what we do with the money? No, we're gonna, the board will be deciding that and moving that through our budget process or other appropriation processes. Um, this is just the first instance of that. Finally, I wanted to just mention that just circle that fund in your mind, fund 840. So that's the fund, that's the ARPA fund as of now. Um, so that's, that's, that'll be the fund in the budget. Uh, that we'll be hearing a lot more about in as we go through the budget process. Uh, so hopefully that answered some questions. Does anybody have any other questions that I didn't anticipate? All right, seeing none, if the clerk could please call the roll. Lakshin? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Michael? Yes. Kasalakwa? Yes. Paul? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Store? Yes. Straub? Yes. Summers? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Thorsland? Yes. Wolken? Yes. Ammons? Yes. Carter? Yes. Cowart? Esri? Yes. Portado? Yes. Yes. Goss? Yes. Harper? Yes. Humphrey? Yes. King? Yes. Patterson? Yes. Um, next up, I'll mention the treasurer's reports on the website, the auditor, there's several things under there. Uh, George is here, if you, if you have any questions of him, he give, gave us an update on the audit, which was turned in um, by June 1st, so we are um, in, you know, in good standing now. So thank you to George and his staff for getting that through and to the treasurer staff and to the circuit clerk staff and to everybody else who um, helped him get the information that he needed in order to get that through. Um, and for the work that he did to make sure that the adverse impact of that was limited as it could be. And then he also gave us an, a standing update on the 2021 bank reconciliations. I will say um, that since this memo was put together, some of these have moved and I've spoken with the treasurer um, and they're working on getting these caught up. And the treasurer is gonna give us an updated memo kind of on the status of things. Um, and we'll just keep doing that uh, for both the 2020 audit as we transition into that and catching up on uh, 2021 stuff. Uh, we'll just keep between the two uh, financial officers uh, just regularly bringing you reports so that we're transparent and everybody kind of knows where we're at um, as we look to get caught up. But I didn't know if uh, anyone had any questions about any of this or I know it's for information only, but if anybody wanted to ask or say anything to George. I do. All right. Oh, go for it. Thank you. Um, I saw he took responsibility for fixing the problem with the grant funding for RPC. Did not see that he took responsibility for creating it um, by not being responsible in completing the audit on time. Um, we talked about transparency. I hope that we are more transparent as this process moves forward uh, to tell us on, in a timely manner when there is an issue with grant funding from federal government. Um, so that we can know how we might better achieve the the audit on time. Thank you. Any other comments? And I will say, to, to, Jim, to your to your point that 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 second memo it speaks to that trying to keep the board abreast of like where the treasurer's office is on catching up with everything, 
and we'll, and then as they move into the 2020 audit, I anticipate we'll continue to bring memos like this for both 2020 and 21. I was more interested in receiving information when we when the auditor receives a letter stating that they're going to shut off the grant funding, which didn't happen in a timely manner in the past. It had nothing to do with the treasurer's office. It has to do with the auditor being responsible for the audit. Happy. Any other comments? Does Jim know the number of days that elapsed between the reception of the letter by me and uh, discussion between uh, me and RPC at their at the commissioner's meeting? I just know you didn't tell us when we had a meeting. No, I was invited, I would say roasted at the RPC uh, ad hoc meeting. Uh, that seemed to have been in the works even before the letter was received. It was so well planned. And so I cannot agree with you. I, I think that I was forthright and timely. And uh, certainly this cascade of memos that I hope you enjoyed is fulfilling that spirit of your desire to be informed. Any other thoughts? Ms. Carter. I want to um, thank everyone that was involved in getting that information together, like that, that um, stated. Um, this last year has been hard and hectic, so I'm glad that it's done and on to the next thing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anything else? All right. Um, next up, a request for approval for release of the RFP 2021-005 for financial auditing services for the County of Champaign. Uh, so do I have a motion? So moved, Michaels. Second. Taylor. Taylor, Michaels and Taylor. And just uh, so for clarification, the, the current audit firm that we have will be with us through completing the 2020 audit, but then that'll be the end of their services. So we need to get in position for the 2021 audit. Um, any questions? Seeing none, if the clerk could please call the roll. Lakshin. Yes. McGuire. No. Michaels? Yes. Casalacqua? Yes. Paul? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Store? Yes. Straub? Yes. Summers? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Thorsland? Yes. Wolken? Yes. Ammons? Yes. Carter? Yeah. Carter? Yes. Coward? Yes. Esri? Yes. Portado? Yes. Goff? Yes. Harper? Yes. Humphrey? Yes. King? Yes. Patterson? Yes. Great. Next up, we're under the county executive session. And first, we are going to hear from the amazing Tammy Ogden, who's going to speak to us about the do, do our quarterly uh, general corporate fund budget projection. Thank you. What an introduction. OK, can you see my screen? Yes. Thank you. This is the uh, first fiscal year 2021 budget report that you um, will see from me. And I just want to preface by saying that we are still um, somewhat early in the fiscal year. Um, this report is based on financials at the end of May. And at the end of May, the county has generally um, only seen three to four of our um, state chair distributions. So there's still a lot of movement that could occur between now and the end of the fiscal year. 
I want to start with just um, giving a brief summary of the 2019 audit, which has been stated has uh, been completed. The ending fund balance for fiscal year 2019 general fund was $7.57 million, and that reflects an 18% um, fund balance of the expenditure budget. Fiscal year 2020 is unaudited, as you know. Um, however, the auditor's office has just completed the official closeout of fiscal year 2020 and is projecting an ending fund balance of $9.6 million. This represents a 24.4% fund balance and is actually significantly greater than what was last reported to the board. In fact, it's about $1.3 million over the report that was provided to the board in March and also the financial forecast. And this amount, um, the difference in what was reported uh, previously and what um, the auditor's office is projecting for the um, unaudited 2020 fund balance is largely associated with unrecorded activity in fiscal year 2019 that resulted in adjustments to fiscal year 2020. So as you know, I have been pretty hesitant to provide financial reports and um, largely related to this reason, uh, unreconciled bank accounts and unrecorded activity um, just leave uh, too much room for me to be able to make accurate projections. So I am letting you know that we are um, anticipated to end fiscal year 2020 with a significantly greater fund balance than um, was anticipated. So starting with um, fiscal year 2021 uh, revenues, um, we are, as you heard earlier in this meeting, still in a position of unreconciled accounts um, for the general fund. The reconciliations are a few months behind. Um, at the end of May, only 15% of budgeted revenues had been recorded. And so again, projections at this point are still at a pretty high level. The fiscal year 2021 revenue budget, as you know, also was prepared very conservatively. Um, at the time we were doing the budget and approving the budget, there was still a lot of uncertainty about the um, economic recovery coming out of the pandemic. Um, experts, economists couldn't even agree what that was going to look like. So the county's approach was to be conservative in budgeting for our revenues. And based on what we are seeing so far, I can tell that um, the economy and its impact on Champaign County revenues is performing much better than expected. And in fact, much better than many economists projected. This is a roll up of projections at this point by revenue categories. And I really wanna just focus tonight on grants and state shared revenues, which are two of the categories that I anticipate seeing a pretty significant uh, increase over budgeted revenues. Starting with grants, um, we approved a budget amendment, I believe it was two months ago, for the NIBRS grant, which is the Sheriff's grant. Um, that grant uh, we thought would run into fiscal year 2022, but actually um, that work is going to be largely completed in 2021. That grant will have a corresponding expenditure, so um, really uh, just pass through dollars. But the cure reallocation uh, that you um, have approved a budget amendment for from the Board of Health and CUPHD for unused cure money, um, almost totaling $200,000, is going to be added to uh, fund balance in fiscal year 2021. And I don't expect that we will expend um, most of that until fiscal year 2022. As you know, Executive Couple has recommended that be used for a salary survey that's not likely be, to be completed until next year. I'm sorry, I've got to move my bar. There we go. Um, some of the state shared revenue categories that I want to focus on tonight uh, our personal property replacement tax, sales tax, and um, use and income tax. So these uh, revenue lines are anticipated to reflect um, significant um, growth over what was budgeted for fiscal year 2021. 
And I'll start with our PPRT revenues. So these revenues are actually um, provided as estimates um, from the Illinois Department of Revenue. And the state of Illinois' forecast for 2021 PPRT revenues was that they would be decreasing. They indicated that was a result of COVID-19, transfers out of the fund, and also prior year one-time occurrences that would not be reoccurring. Year to date, Champaign County's disbursements of PPRT revenues are actually up 76% um, compared to the prior fiscal year. So obviously the estimates provided to us were um, inaccurate and we have received some explanation of that. And what has been explained to us is that this is a result of the timing of tax due dates. Also um, industries that fared better during the pandemic more than offset the losses of those industries that um, suffered during the pandemic. We've also been notified that the August distribution was going to be down 80%. But even with that um, decrease anticipated, there is still a budget surplus expected. Sales tax is um, the next group that I want to focus on. And this, um, this group will include our um, one cent, quarter cent, cannabis sales tax, and also not part of the general fund, but public safety sales tax. Um, it was very challenging to try to budget for this because not only were we trying to weigh in what the economic recovery was going to look like, but also um, legislative changes that occurred January 1st, which um, was the level the playing field legislation. And that legislation was expected to um, increase county revenues because it actually imposed sales, the local sales taxes where the product was delivered although it was uh, really impossible to determine what that would look like because we don't have any idea at what points um, people are going to be making those purchases and, and how much they were going to be purchasing. But um, I can tell you that for March collections, which we received in June, the quarter cent sales tax was 68% over the prior fiscal year month. Obviously March of 2020, was um, the first month of really the, the COVID-19 impact. So I looked back as well at March of 2019 and uh, March of 2021 revenues for uh, the quarter cent sales tax were 33% greater even than March of 2019. And you can see this chart I've provided here. Uh, with the exception of fiscal year 2020, our quarter cent sales tax for the prior four years pretty much hovered around 1.8 million. Um, for the you know, fiscal year to date period. And in fiscal year 2021, we have already exceeded $2 million for uh, quarter cent sales tax revenues. Use tax is the next category um, that I wanna talk about and uh, level the playing field legislation again uh, comes into play here because experts projected that use tax revenues would decline anywhere between 25 and 50% because what much of what was being collected as use tax would now be um, collected as sales tax. Again, very challenging to try to determine what that you know, reallocation of taxes would look like. The county um, prepared its budget with only a 6.6% um, decrease from what 2020 projections were. And thus far year to date, we have seen a 17% increase in those revenues. So again, uh, a lot of moving parts here that, um, you know, projections and uh, expert recommendations have not actually come to fruition uh, in the county's favor. Income tax is the last uh, state shared revenue we want to talk about. And I know we talked a little bit about this um, during the financial forecast. Um, we use the Illinois Municipal League's estimates for our estimates. And uh, at the time of the budget preparation, those estimates were $92 per capita. Current estimates are $112 per capita. And um, based on Champaign County's unincorporated census, this could result in as much as $650,000 uh, in surplus revenues for Champaign County. Um, I 
what is not factored in here is uh, any changes in the 2020 census. So this is just um, status quo uh, numbers that I'm, I'm using for these calculations. And as I stated in the um, financial forecast, the explanation that was provided by IML for the significant um, growth in income tax versus projections is that wages fell less than expected and jobs that were lost were largely lower paying service jobs as uh, opposed to professional jobs, higher wage professional jobs. Moving to the expenditure budget for the general corporate fund, uh, we are expecting underspending in um, personnel and services. And um, if you paid attention to the HR report that was provided in tonight's packet, you can see there are 31 general fund uh, vacancies currently on that report. So it um, should be as no surprise that the county does anticipate that it will underspend personnel and pretty significantly in excess of a million dollars is what the projection is at this time. So moving to the summary, um, again, I just cannot state enough that these are very preliminary projections. Um, I'm confident there's gonna be a budget surplus, but that you know these numbers will be fluctuating throughout the year. And um, the projected revenue to expenditure surplus at this time is in excess of $3 million. That is associated with uh, Increase in projected revenues of about $1.8 million. And at this point, projected underspending of about $1.6 million. Um, so starting with the, the ending fiscal year 2020 fund balance um, and projected revenues and expenditures, the fund balance projection at this point is just under $13 million, which I literally never thought I would hear come out of my mouth. Um, this represents a 32% uh, projected expenditure budget, but I just want to mention that nearly $200,000 in set aside uh, for the salary survey, which is you know earmarked for that, um, would actually translate to a 31.6% um, fund balance projection at this time. And so a couple of things I just want to mention. There were a couple of projects that we did um, defer in fiscal year 2021 as we weren't certain of our financial position. So it's possible that the county board may want to discuss whether or not we would wanna go ahead and move forward with some of those projects um, through budget amendments, um, or potentially we could plan to appropriate some of this fund balance in a uh, future fiscal year for I would recommend um, one-time expenditures, uh, not recurring expenditures, as I don't anticipate that there will be a significant surplus, obviously, year over year that would allow us to um, implement any kind of recurring cost to this extent. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions for Tammy? I do, if possible, Jim Goss. Sure, go for it, Jim. Tammy, thank you so much for the report. And all I really have as a comment is to say happy birthday. Thank you for uh, being thank here. Thank you. So glad to spend it with you tonight. <laughs> happy birthday. Thank you. Tammy, Tammy. we share a birthday. <laughs> oh, happy birthday to you. Happy Gemini's. <laughs> Any anybody else? Thanks, thanks, Tammy. And I appreciate your work on this. I know that, like you said, there's a lot of moving parts. So uh, this is great that that we we have this opportunity. Um, I don't see anybody else, so I'm going to move on. Uh, and that way, Tammy could go enjoy what's left of her birthday. To um the recommendation of the county board. Um, does anybody have any issue if I do two, the next two together? Seeing none. A recommendation of the county board for approval of the creation of the senior zoning technician position to be assigned to grade range G and concurrent elimination of the one of one of the zoning technician positions effective 
June 25th, 2021, and recommendation to the County Board for approval of the creation of the Assistant Animal Control Director position to be assigned to grade range I, effective June 25th, 2021. So moved, Esri. Second. Esri. Second. Esri and Eric. You're in an, um, any discussion on these? Seeing none, if the clerk could please call the roll. Lakshin? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Michaels? Yes. Pesalequa? Yes. Paul? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Store? Yes. Straub? Yes. Summers? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Thorslin? Yes. Wolken? Yes. Ammons? Yes. Carter? Yes. Howard? Esri? Yes. Portado? Yes. Goss? Yes. Harper? Yes. Humphrey? Yes. King? Yes. Patterson? Yes. All right, thank you. Um, next up, uh, ordinance establishing a property assessed clean energy PACE program and a PACE area to finance or refinance the acquisition, construction, installation, or modification of energy projects providing for the issuance of not to exceed 500 million taxable PACE revenue notes of, of the county to finance projects pursuant to the county's PACE program providing for the payment of said notes, authorizing the sale of said notes to the purchasers thereof and other matters related thereto. Um, do I have a motion? So moved, Goss. Mr. Goss, second. Michaels. Michaels. Second. Michaels. Um, Mr. Goss, Ms. Michaels, uh, does anybody have any questions? Um, I would, you could direct them to the executive. I don't see any. So uh, if the clerk could please call the roll. Lakshin? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Michaels? Yes. Pesalequa? Yes. Paul? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Store? Yes. Straub? Yes. Summers? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Thorsland? Yes. Wolken? Yes. Ammons? Yes. Carter? Yes. Howard? Yes. Carter? Yes. Esri? Yes. Portado? Uh, yes. Goss? Yes. Harper? Yes. Humphrey? Yes. King? Yes. Patterson? Yes. Other, okay, other business? Don't see any. Chair's report, I did it under communications. Um, things to put on the consent agenda. I have A1 through nine. 11 through 13 and D uh, two through four. And I wanted to just make sure that we're gonna keep um, A 11 off consent. What about A 10? Do we have a unanimous vote for that? No. Okay, so you keep that off. Yeah. Okay. A, so A through A one through nine, okay, and then twelve and thirteen, and then D uh, two through four. Um, <clears throat> I'm done with my section. Back to you. All right. Um, uh, seeing no other business, um, without objection, at eight o'clock, call this meeting adjourned.